Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Minister of Parliamentary Affairs and Governance, Gilti Shira, stressed that there is a need for the involvement of persons at the grassroots level in strengthening Guyana's anti-corruption structure. All this is part of trust building. If our people don't trust the institutions, they're not going to share information with you. No matter how much whistleblower legislation you pass, they're just not going to. So part of what we're doing is to build trust that the institutions work, they work fairly and transparently. And that, that's an important challenge for us. Guyana's anti-corruption framework will see further strengthening to ensure optimal transparency and accountability. This government is firmly committed to putting in place an institutional architecture for, for good governance that assures that we will be able, first of all, not only to subscribe to all of the international norms to which we have affixed our signatures and affixed our national commitments, but equally a good governance framework that will redound ultimately to the benefit and well-being of all of the Guyanese people. 39 persons from across the country will be trained to operate and maintain medical equipment in hospitals and health centers with the launch of the biomedical program. This will help to significantly reduce downtime with medical equipment. But we want people to be there at the immediate place to make sure that things can be fixed quickly so our turnaround time, downtime, can be drastically reduced from months and years so basically to reduce that to hours. Guyana received approximately $60 million in medical equipment from China to provide the highest quality of healthcare services at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, GPHC. We have seen that when the medical brigades start coming here, that their work here at the Georgetown Hospital and at the Linden Hospital has certainly helped to improve uh, tertiary health care in Guyana. And what was also very important in this relationship is not just that the doctors came in and did surgery and they left. What was important was that they did surgery and they teach their local counterparts how to do these types of surgery. And just over the last uh, two years or so. Some 64 clinical and public health practitioners from across the Caribbean are now holders of certificates in areas of health, enabling them to better contribute to the Caribbean's developing health sector. The three-month course saw persons instructed in either leadership and management in health or policy development and advocacy for global health. So a lot of work is going to be done. And what you'll see is a transformation in the next couple of years of the health sector. But we need the human resource to run this. So that is why it is so important that I was so happy to hear the kinds of programs that were being offered. Residents from remote communities in Region 9, Upper Takutu, Upper Essequibo, are set to benefit from four more telemedicine sites this year. This will help to transform the delivery of healthcare services in the region. This year we are adding 15 more sites. So we will be putting four in Region 1, four in Region 7, four in Region 8, four, four more in Region 9, and so that we are increasing that complement. New psychiatric services are being made available with the commissioning of the $100 million renovated psychiatric unit at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. We recognize that a lot of emphasis has been placed in the past on physical health. And we work very hard to put different things in place. But one of the areas that have been neglected is really mental health. Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips has been updated on the progression of works at the Kumu and Mokomoko hydropower projects when he visited the areas. The government will continue to provide projects and programs to train people how to utilize 
what is given to you to better your lives, to better prepare your, your children, right, for life in Guyana. Caribbean states like Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, and Antigua and Barbuda have heightened interest in Guyana's fresh agricultural produce. We are working now and meeting with them to stop or to remove, so to speak, remove all the non-tariff barriers that used to cause our produce not to go into the market. So we have to work with the farmers. There are enough markets out there for our farmers produce to go there and we will work with you to find market. Farmers of Anz Grove East Coast Demerara and surrounding communities will soon benefit from agricultural inputs and other support to enhance production. We have the high value crops. You know that the president would have set up a company now where young people is managing. And we can work with the young people in your community to realize the dream both in the high value crops and in livestock production. So let's form that team and work together to develop the agriculture sector. Hundreds of Region 2 residents took the opportunity to sign up for scholarships that are being offered through the Guyana Online Academy of Learning Goal Scholarship Initiative. It is much more than that. It is you investing in yourself so that you can be one, proud of yourself, two, you are able to earn an income and by gaining a skill or an academic certificate, and three, that you would be part and parcel of the transformation of your country. Because Guyana has been since 2020, and even before then, we had, a, we had a setback for five years, but we are moving again. And we want to be able to have our people transform along with the infrastructural changes and so on that the country will be seeing. This is not just about oil and gas. It's about sustainability of our country and ensuring that our country progress and our people progress to a standard of modernization, to a standard of com to a level of comfort that we all know that we want. So development is key, and if we don't have our people trained in specific areas, we can't have development like we want it, right? So these scholarship programs is what will get you, maybe it will be the first step for some of you, or maybe it will be a next step for some of you. But whatever it is, I don't want you to pa let this opportunity pass you by. The Damarara Harbor Bridge Corporation on Friday received a self-loader machine and a power barge for operational efficiency. It will decrease the amount of downtime on the bridge. I'm extremely pleased to join the corporation this morning in what we are witnessing is the enhancement of their capability to get things done at a faster rate, to respond in a more timely manner. Five persons residing in the community of Agricola, East Bank de Marara, have been awarded some $23.2 million in contracts to execute drainage works in the community. This is following a commitment made by His Excellency, Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, during a community engagement in February. I want each contractor to ensure that you all do the work properly, give your business and your name a good one, treat the workers them fairly, give them a fair wage. Residents of the hinterland and riverine communities will continue to get better access to treated water as an $18 million pot drill, compressor, and mud pump has been commissioned. The drill has the capacity to dig wells up to 600 feet. First um, well will be drilled at Silver Hill along the Linden and Susdike Highway. Then the rig, this rig here will move into the Essequibo. Pamroon River, we will, we will be drilling about six wells. Government has pledged to address long-standing land ownership and other housing-related matters in Anz Grove, East Coast, the Marara. The persons in that community is ready, well then we will work with them because there has always been claim of ancestors' land. I know the people who occupy there are willing, 
but then the others were different clean. One that is sorted out and what is a clear um, part that we can clear for this to happen, it will proceed with the assistance of the AG. 20,000 residents from Diamond to Prospect on the east bank of the Marara will soon benefit from an improved level of water service with the drilling of an existing well at 6th Avenue Diamond to a further 60 feet. So what we're asking is for the residents to bear with us um, until we can bring this back, well back into operation. It was a good producing well. 40,000 residents from Echoes to Providence will soon benefit from improved access to portable water with the drilling of a new well in Eccles. All the programs, all the projects, all the funding that you see that are coming to GWIW is for us to achieve our SDG 6 by 2025. That is what we're working for. That also tells you that you have a commitment by your president to ensure that the resources our various form, but the resources are made available for us to achieve those targets. Women from Anne's Grove were encouraged to partake in hard skill training programs offered by government due to the demand for labor in the various sectors. There's only so many technicians you would want to have. The areas of development, uh, that is where women should focus. And that is the type of program I want to bring to Hans Grove and all the villages on the East Coast. So we are in contact with the NBC and I know BIC is developing a program with them to launch some programs in the Hans Grove area. The Board of Industrial Training, BIT, has certified an additional 626 persons in Regions 1 and 2. Many Guyanese have been able to improve their lives by completing technical and vocational training courses through the Board of Industrial Training. That is the reason why the Board of Industrial Training exists. To ensure that persons can do a program without all the fancy requirements of life. The technological opportunities offered by the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security has since helped the 200 women to prepare for WeLift 3. From WeLift 1 to 3, we would have launched within that time the Win app. So that's a platform where we would have seen 800 women already register on. We are going to be launching a very, very exciting thing on the opening day of WeLift 3, where women will have another opportunity handed to them free of cost. The vision going forward is to ensure that we have more women trained, more women trained in niche areas where they can fill voids that exist in their communities, more consortium set up. 25% of the 4,000 women who have received training through the Women's Innovation and Investment Network WIN initiative have been able to establish their own businesses. And we've been training women in business. So that does not mean a talk shop. They have to have a business plan at the end of it. They also have to register their business. This brings us to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.